And how about this to mark the occasion? Another fly past. Now I'm going to say that signifies that we're about to have a final. It's about to be on in here. Alison Felix has a multitude of other media duties to attend to. Gail Devers is back on the microphone and eight men stand poised, ready to try and seize a moment of sporting immortality here in Hayward Field. Wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, whatever continent you're watching on, give us five more minutes of your time. This could be very, very special indeed. Curly, hoping to upgrade his Olympic silver to world championship gold on home soil. That was the road to the final. 9.79 in the heats. Akani Sambini, could he take this title back to South Africa? He is a brilliant, brilliant major championship performer and he's peaked at the right time. Trayvon Bramel, he's been desperate to deliver for such a long time, as has Sani Brown. Two hundred meter finalist, Sani Brown in one. Bramel is on the outside in lane eight from a world indoor champion. He's been accused of not always delivering his best in the finals. Could he do so? Sonny Brown is in one. He has made major finals before, but not as big as this. Not on a night like this, on a stage like this. In lane seven, the defending champion, world indoor silver medalist, Christian Coleman. Aaron Brown, he's been in Olympic finals. He's close to home. Did he deliver the performance of a lifetime? So much excitement in Jamaica for Oblique Seville. I know they'll be watching in Kingston and Falmouth and all over, and maybe Usain Bolt will be tuning in as well. Seville goes in six. Marvin Bracey in lane three. Joint third fastest in the world this year. Is he going to have to break his PB to take this title? Akani Sambini has not had the easiest of seasons, but he's the Commonwealth champion. He won the Stockholm Diamond League and he has peaked for the big time. And it really is going to be the big time. Fred Curley is a massive, massive star in the United States. Is he about to make history here on home soil? Sani Brown, Japan in one. Aaron Brown, Canada two. Marvin Bracey, USA three. Fred Curley, USA in four. Akani Sambini, South Africa five. Oblique Seville, Jamaica six. Coleman in seven, the defending champion. Brumel in lane eight. Four American sprinters line up here for a moment that generations of their predecessors were desperate for. A world championship on their home soil. Can one of them secure legendary status here at Hayward Field? One chance for glory and greatness. Ten seconds to justify a lifetime of work. The men's 100 metre world championship final. They're away first time, there's a massive roar from the crowd. Coleman's going well out in lane seven. Still no move yet from Curley. Bracey going well, Curley's under pressure. Oh, and it's so tight. Did Curley get it on the line or has Marvin Bracey beaten him to the title? I think, I think Curley might have just done it. It took him a long time to get those legs moving. It looked like he was getting tight. Curley's done it. What a moment for the 400 meter man. Bronze in Doha, silver in Tokyo, and it is all gold here for Fred Curley. He's beaten Bracey.
by two one hundredths of a second. Fantastic. And there's the confirmation. Trayvon Brumel has made it a clean sweep for the United States. U.S. sweep, and he is getting that. He's taking his victory lap and getting everyone involved. He did not panic. He didn't get out, but he didn't panic. I was watching Curley coming through the middle. Bracey ran the race of his life. life. Exactly. He really did. He was clear. He had half a yard, but Curley didn't panic. He said for years that that 400 meter stamina would see him through, and it did. And it, did. it wasn't it going did. to be 9.79, but the time is absolutely irrelevant. The World Championship is about delivering at the very moment you need to. It's not about the time, it's about the number one. And Curley has secured himself a place in history. He did, he did. That's exactly what it's about. Nobody cares about what time he did. What I was most impressed with is that he did not panic because he didn't have any kind of start. And he did not panic. And Bracey, like you said, he had the race of his life. And you know what? You have to admire Fred Curley. There's, there's, no, there's no posturing, there's no gesturing. Mm -hmm. He gives the impression that he's an absolute gentleman. He is focused on his yes. job. And his job is to fulfill a lifelong dream and make the most of this monumental talent that he's got. Coleman got out well, second from the left-hand side, but Bracey was brilliant yeah, in lane was three. First. He was out first and then Ramel, Bracey on the inside started moving. You thought that, you know, you would thought that Fred was out of it, but he stayed with his composure and he just kept pulling, pulling his, his feet back up underneath him, back up underneath, and that's what got him over the line. And you know, I'm really pleased for Trayvon Bromel as well, because unfairly in the past, he's been labelled as a little bit of a choker. He should have made the Olympic final last year in Tokyo. He didn't, and he was, the, on times, he was the outstanding performer in 2021. He's got himself a global medal, and there is no disgrace in finishing third to this mercurial talent. Absolutely. Fred not. Curley is sensational. US sweep. And listen to the noise here in the stadium. He's being interviewed on the PA system. Every single person who is able in this arena is on their feet. Gold, silver and bronze to the United States. Fred Curley achieves a lifelong dream. So many times he's been close, but today he was the man. And this is a night that will never be forgotten. That was awesome. It gave me chills. I don't think I got nervous when I ran. I get nervous when they ran. And only he'll be able to explain what happened or what did not happen, and it won't even matter. The most impressive element about this, Gail, I think, is that he didn't panic. He did not panic. And anyone else would have panicked. You know, because I know he's gone back and he's been working on his starts and he didn't get the start that he wanted. And usually if that doesn't happen, you panic and you go into panic mode where you stand up and you forget everything else and it goes out the window. He stayed into his, his, his zone. He moved through the middle and pulled down at the end and that's what got him over the finish line. What an absolute treat for the crowd who have stayed for the climax of our second night. We've had so much drama already. It feels like we've been here watching athletics for seven days. Look at the emotion on Trevon's face. You know that it's all coming down to he wanted that so bad and he finally did it. So pleased for Bromel. He's, he's, you know, life hasn't been easy for Bromel, has it? He's been on a bit of a journey tied on time with Marvin Bracey. Seville also ducked inside 10 seconds. Sambini and Coleman were 10.01. Sani Brown and Aaron Brown, 10.06 and 10.07. But Curley, Bracey and Brumel, surely, surely Gale, and this is one of the reasons why we have come here to Eugene, surely 
a 1-2-3 in a home world championship will generate front page headlines in the United States tomorrow. Tell me that's the case. I'm hoping, all I can do is hope like you, it should be everywhere because that was big. Well, hopefully there will be a little boy watching somewhere in the United States and they will see something in Fred Curley that they realize is there in themselves. And if he can do it, you can do it. Get down to your local athletics club, wherever you are in the world. And especially if you're here in the United States, you've got the Olympic Games coming in 2028. Maybe one day it could be your turn to be a Fred Curley, a Marvin Bracey, or a Trayvon Brumel, a global medalist in your own country. I'm so glad you said that because that speaks volumes. It's about allowing these kids to continue to dream. You know, track and field is easy. Go get some shoes. You know, like you said, go down to your local parks and reps somewhere and get involved. It's not about if you want to be an Olympian. It's about, you know, believing in yourself and what you learn from being involved in sports. That never, never say no, that never give up attitude. And you see that on the displayed by those three athletes right there because they've all had something that they had to overcome and get through to get to where they are. What a brilliant ambassador he is for American sport and for track and field. The Olympic silver medalist becomes the world champion and he's done it at home at Haywood Field. What a night for the Americans, what a night. Brilliant from Fred Curley. A bronze in Doha, a silver in Tokyo. He is the world champion tonight here at Hayward Field. Marvin Bracey out dipped, but he'll take great delight with his silver. And Trayvon Brumel answers the questions from the critics. Yes, he can deliver when the pressure's on. He takes the bronze and completes the sweep for the United States.